Um, hi, everyone. I am very happy to introduce Phil Verbera. He is the manager of the community and voter outreach at the LA County Registrar Recorder County Clerk's Office. And uh, he's going to speak to us today about uh, the changes in voting that happened before the pandemic, of course, and now with the pandemic, how that's impacting uh, our voting for everyone. So it is my pleasure to introduce Phil uh, to give you a presentation today. Phil? Awesome. Well, thank you, Phil. Vicki. <clears throat> so like Vicki said, my name is Phil Rivera. I'm at the Registrar's Office. And I'm excited because I apologize for coming on a little late. I had a little bit of server issues. However, I'm excited because I see a lot of faces I recognize as a Glendora resident. I always love presenting here. That's why they threw me this one. So welcome. Uh, thank you everyone for having me today. Um, what I'm gonna basically do is jump in and give you guys a screen, a snapshot of what the election's looking like, what we've done to uh, mitigate COVID circumstances and such. And uh, we'll be, if there's time for questions, if, you know, I'm free to answer questions. Let me go ahead and see if I can share my screen. There we go. There we go and share. All right, start from beginning. All right, by nod of heads, we're all seeing voting in a pandemic era. Yep. Good, oh, I see that Jeff put his name on this one, great. Okay, so November. <clears throat> many people out there have heard, and by now we should have gotten the word straight, but many people have heard that upcoming November is gonna be an all vote by mail election, and that's not the case. Okay, every single registered voter in Los Angeles County will be receiving a vote by mail ballot, regardless of voter registration status, whether vote by mail or not vote by mail. For this election, they will. Um, but we will have in person voting opportunities where we could do so safely, right? Um, the, the, desire, the need to send everyone a vote by mail ballot actually came to us back in April. So we've been preparing for this a lot longer than, than the state has been preparing it, so to speak. Uh, back when COVID first hit, when the pandemic first hit, our Board of Supervisors, your Board of Supervisors, reached out to us and said, hey, we want to find the safest way uh, to offer the citizens of Los Angeles County a voting opportunity. What is that? We think it's vote by mail. We said, yeah, that's fine. We could do that. So every single registered voter, everyone's registered by October 19th, will automatically receive a vote by mail ballot. Now, again, vote by mail does not preclude you from going to the polls. So we will have vote centers available where we could do so safely. And that's been a challenge right now. Uh, a lot of the locations we use in the past are simply not large enough to offer six foot uh, social distancing. When you think about it, you know, the, the voting device is three feet wide, then you have to have an additional six feet. So we're looking at over 10 feet per voter. So that's been a challenge locating areas where we could have that. Now we're planning on having 10 days of voting. We're looking at 75 uh, vote centers located across the county for 10 days. And then that number will bump up to about 800 for a five day voting period. So the initial voting period will begin on October 24th and that'll go through November 3rd. And then the five day centers will open on October 30th and that'll go through November 3rd. Finally, another thing we've done is we've expanded our vote by mail drop box program. Uh, for the March primary, we had around 200 drop boxes around the county. And for the general, we're going to have 400 drop boxes around the county. And wow. keep in mind, these are in the, yeah, it's, it's huge. No, we more than doubled it. We're really trying to get them out there. These are independent of USPS, right? USPS does not pick up ballots from these. These are only monitored and retrieved by our staff. And again, no county employee ever handles ballots alone. It's always got to be a team of minimum of two people. Um, here's what our drop boxes look like. <clears throat> so just a couple quick reminders. We always remind people to sign and date the back of their vote by mail ballot. I always like to use this opportunity um, to remind the community, please only surrender that vote by mail ballot to someone you absolutely know and trust, right? In the past, the law said, anybody could turn in your vote by mail for you, as long as they sign it, or in the past said, the only people that could turn it in is your relatives or a member of your household. Now the law says anybody could turn it in. And on some respects, that's a good thing, right? It allows access or someone who has transportation issues, they could have a neighbor bring it in for them. Uh, folks at assisted living facilities, you know, the director could collect them up and take them in from all the residents and drop them in a drop box. However, we do have to be careful, right? That does open up the, the area. I don't wanna call out any states specifically, North Carolina, but we did have some issues in past <laughs> elections where folks were going around collecting those ballots and then they either never turned them in, they tried to alter the ballots, what came out of that? The election had to be rerun and federal felonies were handed out. So 
LA County has a history of running clean, transparent elections, and we want to keep it that way. So while we can't change the law, whether we agree with it or not, we are election administrators, we do warn the public, please only surrender that ballot to someone you absolutely know and trust. Now, I've mentioned before in speaking with these groups that LA County is about expanding options. <clears throat> so in this case, the state worked with us. I mentioned that back in April, we started working with USPS. We were ahead of the curve. And since April, we've had weekly meetings with USPS headquarters in LA every week since April. The Secretary of State has since made that a, basically a mandatory practice for every county across the state. Say, hey, you need to meet with, every, with your post offices every single week. We've been doing that. USPS has made it their goal to deliver all election materials, whether it be from the registrar to the voters or from the voters back to the registrar within five to seven days, okay? That, that's a great goal for them to take on. Yeah. Um, now, to supplement that, the Secretary of State has amended the law, okay? In the past, the law said you could receive a vote by mail ballot at the headquarters up to three days past election day. We call it the E plus three law. So as long as it's postmarked on election day, you have three more days to accept it. So the mail could get it to us by Friday. The Secretary of State has temporarily amended that rule to make it E plus 17. So now, as long as your ballot's postmarked on November 3rd, we could accept it right up until 17 would be November 20th, okay? If USPS is able to um, meet their goal of having all materials delivered in five to seven days, wow, even on the high end seven days, we still have a 10 day buffer there. On the flip side, we do not have any extra time to process the election, but we're not worried about that. We've run into this many times in the past. We have shifts that go to three, four in the morning if needed. So processing is not gonna be an issue. Again, LA County has never failed to uh, certify election within the required amount of time, and we don't plan on doing so now. So an added bonus that the state's done is they've contracted with this company called Ballot Tracks. And basically this is a free service for voters. You go to the, sec you go to the website, california.ballottracks.net. You provide some basic info. It's a first and last name, your home address, date of birth, and you either provide an email address or a, phone, a cell phone number. Uh, and that's to receive either email alerts or text message alerts on the status of your ballot. So you'll now, as soon as you mail that ballot, you'll be able to track it the same way you track a package coming to you from Amazon. Oh, text message, your ballot has been received by USPS. Oh, your ballot is en route to Norwalk headquarters, right. something like that. So again, a little bit more control to try and allay the fears of the voters with the, ten, with the tenuous circumstance of a USPS. Now I mentioned 10 day and five day voting centers. <laughs> At this point, I do wanna state that all voting centers will be open from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily. And again, that's including weekends. The only exception to that is election day proper, November 3rd, and we have the traditional hours of 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. So whether it's a 10 day location or a five day location, we'll have 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. on election day, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And of course, on any of the days, if there are people in line when the close comes, if there's people in line at 7 p.m., we will send a monitor to the end of the line and everybody that was already in line will continue voting until we're done. Anyone new that shows up after the, that line monitor gets out there after 7 p.m., they will be turned away and asked to come back another day. Um, let's see, ballot marking device. So we've also made some changes to the ballot marking device. Um, just as a reminder, the ballot marking devices, these are not networked in any way, shape or form. These are standalone devices. And the number one piece of security, you can see it there in the lower left-hand corner, is the fact that it's still a paper ballot, okay? Paper ballot is the, is the primary record of choice there. Um, this device does not store votes. It does not know once you're done and it prints that paper ballot, it has no more information from that voter or from what, who they voted on. Um, and of course, all devices are fully accessible. One thing, that people had concern over in previous election was the more button, right? I'm seeing some heads nod, people remember the more button. We've alleviated that. You can see on the left, there's actually, that's a screenshot of what it's gonna look like now. So there's no way you could not see the more button. There will be a black transparent overlay. So any contest that has more than, um, more than five candidates, because we can only show five at a time, will have this overlay come up first. And it's a black transparent overlay and it lets you know, hey, there's more candidates here to see the rest, hit this more button. Then you have to actually hit okay to acknowledge that you received that message. Once you hit okay, the black mask comes off and you'll simply see the candidates with the more button on the bottom. Um, again, this has been reviewed and tested independently. 
which was required by the Secretary of State. They required us to pay for um, external testing, uh, feasibility studies, all that stuff. And this is the way they had about, I think they had about three different options. This is the one that was the most popular. This is the one that the Secretary of State approved. Um, and this is the one that as I've been seeing it used here and there, uh, people will say, oh yeah, this is much better. So I think it's, it's definitely a step in the right direction. And bigger picture, it's a step to show folks like, hey, this is a voting system for the people of Los Angeles County, right? We used it once, the people came back to us and said, hey, we have the issues here. We perceive these issues. We want these changes. Well, we, we own the system. So we were agile enough to make those changes by November election. This is the nice thing about the, about the county divide, de, <clears throat> sourcing this equipment straight for the voter. Uh, interactive sample ballot. Now, someone that does choose to go to the polls, we could still have a semi touchless uh, experience for you. Um, some of you that saw the presentations last go around, we have what's called a poll pass, an interactive sample ballot. Basically, if you go to lavote.net, you sign up to get your sample ballot electronically, right? I do that because it saves paper. Uh, maybe in a household with four people that are all the same party, you're gonna get four of the same sample ballots. So it's a good idea, you know, save some paper, save the environment, save your tax dollars. Paper is the number one cost of every election. What happens is you'll get your sample ballot via email. You will then have an option to pre-mark your sample ballot. Again, we're not voting over your email. You're just pre-marking it the same way you get your paper ballot and you would pre-mark your choices in there and take that to the polls with you. Except here, after you've pre-marked, it will generate a QR code and you can see that in the middle image there. We call that a poll pass. You could print it out just as it's done there or you could just keep it on your phone screen. When you go to the vote center, you simply scan that QR code and all the choices you made at home will now be populated on the screen. It doesn't print out and you haven't voted yet. It just prints, it just makes all the choices as you pre-described. You then have a chance to make any last minute changes like, oh, I voted for Phil Rivera as the best outreach guy in the county, but I'm gonna change that to Glendora city clerk here. Let me add that. And the change will be made. And then you hit print again. Once it's printed, you have the ability to review all of your choices. If on the odd chance you say, oh my gosh, you know, I have voters remorse. I really, I wanna go back to Phil. He is the best outreach guy. You simply take that ballot back to the poll worker. The law hasn't changed and you could spoil that ballot and start the process all over again. But again, the point here is to point out that we do have interactive sample ballot still, and this is a great way to remain touchless also. Uh, unfortunately, this next screen is something we're all too familiar seeing these days, uh, all COVID safety guidelines. And it's just to ensure you that these guidelines will be followed at every vote center. Uh, it is a mandate that folks wear masks. However, if someone shows up without a mask or they left it in their car, whatever the case may be, we will offer masks, we're offering gloves to folks. Every county employee, every vote center employee will be wearing masks, gloves, if not shields also, some choose to wear the shield. Again, the key thing here is six foot social distancing and ensuring that all equipment is sanitized after every use. Okay, finally, let me get up to some key dates for you. September 24th is when we begin mailing sample ballot books. This is often the time many people in the public say, ah, this is the official start of the election. October 5th is a key date because that's when we start mailing our vote by mail ballots. Okay. Now keep in mind, we're mailing out 5.5 million vote by mail ballots. Okay. The post office is going to have a fit. They made it very clear. Phil, don't drop off five and a half million ballots on our porch one day. We need to roll them out. So a couple hundred thousand on this morning, that afternoon, another couple hundred thousand. I mentioned this so that way, you know, if your neighbors start getting their vote by mail ballots and you haven't gotten yours, don't worry. It's going to take a couple days for the rollout, including, you know, any potential three or five to seven day delay by the post office, you'll get a couple days. Now, if everybody on your cul-de-sac has their ballot and you're still waiting and it's been two weeks, then definitely call me right away. Definitely give me a call. Uh, you know, I've had a team uh, on an instance where it was shown to be an error on the post office even, we still reprinted about, and I had a team member drive it out to someone in North County to ensure they had their opportunity to vote. October 5th is also the first day that all those vote by mail drop boxes are opened up. So theoretically, someone could receive their, their mail that afternoon, fill it out, and by that evening, drop it off in a drop box and they would have voted. Then they got the whole rest of the month to sit back and watch the soap opera unfold. Um, now, if it was not a COVID era, this is also the first day that we would open up our building for early voting here at Norwalk. Unfortunately, with all county buildings closed, it doesn't look like we'll be able to have early voting here. Um, October 19th, outside of election day, this is probably the most important uh, date to remember. And that's because we wanna make sure all eligible people have either updated their registration information or if they weren't previously registered, 
registered by October 19th, because if they do that, we're guaranteeing they're going to get a vote by mail ballot and they'll have that opportunity for a safe voting at home experience. Okay. Um, if anybody, you know, if you know someone that's registering last minute, we actually have a box here right up until midnight. So, you know, organizations that are doing registration, anything like that, we could take it right up until midnight and we'll still get it processed in time for the election. October 24th is when the early voting period starts. And again, that's 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then finally, the key date, election day, very important, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, follow us at lavote.net. One thing I'm asking folks right now is without a ground game, without an outreach, boots on the ground, uh, the best way we can find to get information to the people, pr the primary way is electronically, presentations like this. But I'm also recommending to people now more than ever, if you want the most updated information, because things do change sometimes week by week, sometimes day by day, outside of having Elvia from Glendora City Clerk's Office call me every day and report back, outside of having Vicky call me every day and report back, you can follow our Twitter account now. In the past, it was a lot of fluff, uh, a lot of feel-good stuff. Hey, look, here's the outreach team at a naturalization ceremony, and here they are at this event registering voters, and look, here they are working with this group. Now we've migrated to just simply information and education. So right now the message is, hey, check your registration status, update your registration. Everything is done in nice, easy to digest uh, messages, a lot of beautifully designed graphics. And so I, I ask that folks follow us and reshare. Uh, we get all warm and fuzzy when you like our posts, but again, that doesn't move the message. So what a lot of orgs choose to do, they even right click on our messages, download it, add their logo, and then reshare it again. And we don't care because we know it's the same information we're putting out and that's all we care about is that the public gets the correct information especially this day and age with so much misinformation out there uh, that concludes the snapshot of the general election uh do we have time for questions or are there any questions we do, <clears throat> we do have time for questions if you raise a hand um, not mine raised mike michael has a question i've got mine raised hi phil um, maybe you can answer probably a simple question. Since we're still producing paper ballots, mm -hmm. what's the purpose of spending all this money on the system? On the voting solution system? Yeah, if you're still producing a paper ballot, why don't the other way and then you don't have to worry about more buttons and confusion and all Are that. Are you talking about like just going internet voting, that type of no, thing? No, no. Or just no. all vote by mail? No, right? No, your system right now, right now produces a paper ballot when you go to the machine. Right. The purpose of that is security. That's the number, that's the safest, most secure way you could vote right now to avoid, you know, anytime you move to any kind of electronic device to assist with voting, the number one thing people come over is, can you hack it? How is it gonna be hacked? Is our vote safe? The paper ballot verifies that because nothing is done on the electronic, the paper is your fail safe. It's to allow you to see exactly who I voted for, right? Remember back in the day, tried on uh, electronic voting in other parts of the country and people were pressing one candidate and says, congratulations, you voted for someone else and your vote was gone, it was electronic. Now you have a paper ballot. That way you could verify, hey, the machine didn't mess up anything. These are exactly who I chose. It's not numbers and dots, it's actually names and names of contests. And if you did find you messed up, again, you have that ability to take it to a clerk, have that ballot spoiled and start over again. Bill, so I, paper think you missed, is security. I think you missed the point of my question. Sure. Before we have paper ballots, that you had in your hand. Oh, why did we move from paper to front paper? Of you, and you simply checked off. You didn't have to hit a more button. Sure. You saw everything right in front of you. And you're doing the same thing sure. right now, but complicating the process. What's sure. the advantage? The advantage is now we are able to offer uh, voting solutions to everybody in the county on the same level, right? The old system wasn't flexible enough to meet the needs of the already largest and growing electorate in the county. For example, in order to tally those ballots, just like with a Scantron, those ballots were basically Scantrons, we would have to know what precinct they were from. So as all those hundreds of thousands of ballots came back, we had to spend a couple of weeks sorting them back into precinct order. Once we did that, then you could only tally one precinct at a time because you had to send in a, a key card that said, hey, here's the correct punch positions for this precinct. You would run that and then you could tally that, just that precinct. Then you had to start over with the next precinct. This system eliminates all that. Again, it also offers the advantage of a person being able to vote anywhere in the county and still have access to their home ballot. That's another advantage we have on that. In the past, you know, it, it stinks for someone who lives in North County and works in DTLA, even with two hours off to go vote, they're not gonna make it to North County and back, right? I work in Norwalk, I live in Glendora. It's tough for me to get back to Glendora in the evening uh, in less than an hour and a half. 
So again, accessibility to voting, the paper ballot is the security. We went from paper to paper. It's just an upgraded system. The system we used before was going on 60 years old. And, and again, it wasn't broken. It was just tedious. It was uh, time consuming and it wasn't flexible enough to meet future needs, right? It couldn't grow. The tally machines weren't even made anymore. They were, had already reached a uh, end of production. So any tally machines we had, we actually put one to the side that we would use to, set, to uh, cannibalize in case we needed parts. So that's another reason we needed to migrate to a new system. Uh, the third reason is that Inca DOT system was decertified by the feds in the state. So our old system was not even allowed to be used anymore. As of December 31st, it was decertified. We weren't allowed to use that system. So, we so basically, basically, it was a, something. basically it was a precinct registration issue that prompted this? Uh, I wouldn't say precinct. I said basically the old system was end of life. The old system we had 60 years, it had reached its end of life. It could not grow with, uh, with LA County elections anymore. Our population continues to grow. Uh, we continue to be a mobile population, right? And folks want the ability to vote where they work. They want the ability to vote wherever they happen to be at during that day. So it was part of the overall package. Um, when they did say, because we found out years ago that the system was getting ready to be decertified, which is why we started looking, or part of the reason we've started looking at developing a new system. Um, when the system becomes decertified, there was nothing we could do about that, right? And again, we embraced it because the old system was, encumber you know, was cumbersome and we knew that it wouldn't grow with us or meet our needs for the future. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, no problem, Michael. Appreciate it. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, um, I have my hand up. I'll lower it now. All right. Hey, one of the questions I have, and I've heard this from a variety of people, mm -hmm. they will say, my father, grandfather, great aunt, whatever, registered to vote, registered absentee or vote by mail. They died and they're continuing to get a ballot. Okay. So part of the reason that is like every other government agency, we have to rely on information from another agency, which you've seen in the past issues where government agencies communicate. When folks die, we rely on coroner reports, which aren't right. always timely. This is the reason where last year or <clears throat> closer to the March election, we sent out hundreds of thousands of pink postcards asking people to verify, hey, we have these folks registered there. And recently, before this election, we sent out two mailers. Uh, unfortunately, they looked very much alike, but one was to identify if you needed additional languages for your election materials. The other was to verify voters at that mailing address. That was our second cleanup, and that was done. We actually did that second cleanup specifically because we knew we were gonna have to send everybody a vote by mail ballot. So yeah, we have 5.5 million registered voters. Right. People pass away, people move. And when we aren't notified in a timely manner, it's hard, well, it's impossible for us to be aware of that. So when we the, are made the, aware, we make those changes immediately. So the person needs to tell you, great aunt Sarah died. Yes, we, oh, they don't have to. If the system works great, coroners are on it, coroners are sending us a report right. and we get it, but it doesn't happen timely often. And then the um, other, the sure. follow-up is, let's say great aunt Sarah, nobody notified. The ballot goes to a home, somebody else is there. It is a felony to use that to vote, but is there a protection in place so nobody uses that ballot? If we haven't been notified, she's still active on the rolls. Unfortunately, there's no protection in place. So somebody right? could actually vote for? Somebody could do that. Just like somebody could walk to my mailbox and grab my vote by mail ballot out of there before I got it. The signature it in and turn would it need in. to match, wouldn't it? The signature would need yes. to match. Oh yeah, on the so, back end we catch it, but on the front end, so I can say, right. could it so happen? It would be invalidated yes. when it gets to you. If I'm Absolutely. Aunt Sarah, yes. um, you have my signature on files, it's gonna be very hard for somebody to copy that signature. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, in fact, if you want, this year would be a great year. Um, we're actually doing the vote by mail processing because it's so large at the Fairplex. And I could provide more information because all processing of all tallying and post-election processing is publicly observable. And we always, especially in close campaigns, you can imagine we have the candidates down here. We have their lawyers down right. here. Uh, but now since we're expanding operations, that portion will be in Pomona and you can come see it. The very first thing we do with vote by mail ballots is verify signature. And we do that with an electronic signature verification, which is completely legal. The, and we have that system set very tight tolerances. So if it says it's a good right. signature, no problem. The problem becomes when my grandmother, rest in peace, sends in her signature and it's a little shaky and the computer says, oh, I don't recognize this. 
and that's fine because in LA County, we, have, we don't take a computer's answer for everything. If the computer says it doesn't match, we require three humans to agree that it doesn't match before we'll disqualify that ballot. Okay. Yeah, everything is followed up by humans. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Looks like Lewis has a question for Luis. Yeah, Phil, how you doing? Uh, doing well, how's it going, Lewis? Good question, back, back to the uh, signature verification, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna guess it's uh, virtually impossible to run every ballot through the signature verification. So I'm gonna assume that you sample. Um, no, so every ballot is run through. Every ballot? Every so single all, ballot. Mm -hmm. All registered signatures are been microfished or in, input into the system? Every single system, yep. That's impressive. That's as impressive. soon as someone registers, that uh, registration form is scanned. So Luis, right now, if I looked up your registration information, I'd be able to see every time you re-registered and I would have a digital copy of your signature every single time. So as your signature changes over the years, we'd be able to see that. Yeah, now keep in mind, the law says we could start processing vote by mail. I believe it's, it's seven to 10 days prior to election day. We can't tally the ballots, but we could be in processing. And that's what a big thing is, signature. So as those ballots come in, we're running them through that computer. Well, let, and, let me say that that's very impressive, sincerely. And um, that type of information is information that the general public needs to hear because- Absolutely. You know, everybody's always skeptical of everybody else, but let me ask one more skeptical sure. question. Sure, no, please do. Uh, LA has a lot of, <laughs> Brian, Brian liked that one. Um, LA has a lot of resources throughout our nation. Are we, are we cutting edge or um, is standard throughout the country? Nope. Los Angeles County is the largest, most diverse voting jurisdiction in the nation. So anytime we're doing anything, there's a lot of eyes on us. There's a lot of eyes on us. Uh, for example, the voting solution for all people system we rolled out, not only was it being watched by all counties in, in California, it was being watching, watched by all states. And like I said, I, I've told other people this, we actually promoted this around the world. Dean was invited to a worldwide election conference held in the Maldives last year, where he was a keynote speaker on this system that we developed. Well, this I'm is leading edge technology. I'm recognizing your cutting edge and your, your technology, but I'm asking is, do you know that all the parts of our country have the same type of technology? No, no, we're the only ones. We're the only ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I other groups like Windows. Microsoft and other companies have made voting equipment but off the shelf equipment simply does not work with LA County. We weren't satisfied with security. There's lots of issues. Again, with, with being the largest, we have to ensure we do things right the first time. We don't get second chances. So yeah, we actually uh, submitted this into a DEF CON tournament where they were trying to hack election equipment. And the first thing they told us is, well, how do we connect to it? Because our voting device is standalone printing a paper ballot. The others had access points or you could network onto them and they couldn't get to ours. So that, that was a little feather in our cap. Uh, sometimes the simplest solutions are the most secure solutions. Good, thank you. Mendel. Yes, Phil, so how, how can you stop the uh, person that votes on the fifth and then walks in and tries to vote on, on the great third? Question. Great you question. Know, so, yeah, is great there, question. So, so is there a way that you can stop absolutely. that? Absolutely, absolutely. So, in fact, this new system actually has additional security measures in place that we didn't have in the past. So there's two ways the person can vote on the fifth. Um, are you talking to feel like five days out from election day? Yes. Okay, yeah. so they're voting early, they're voting over the weekend. Right. Anyone that votes in person, as soon as you vote, <clears throat> while the devices, while the voting devices are not networked, where you sign in the electronic poll pad, that is networked to every other poll pad in the county. So Wendell, as soon as you vote in Glendora, I could be here in Norwalk and I could see your name crossed off in Glendora. I could see, ah, oh, this person's already voted, right? That way, if you showed up somewhere else, then we still have a provisional option for you, right? Because, hey, it, I'm not saying this happens, but someone walks into a vote center and says, oh, my name is Mendel, and they don't ask for ID, right? So, okay, great. Right. He has your address. He signs in. He votes. You show up later and say, hey, I'm Mendel. Say, wait a minute. We're going to provide you a provisional. We're going to make sure you sign that provisional, and then we're going to investigate that other person. Anything like okay. that is automatically turned over to the DA. Now, Great. let's say you voted by mail. Everybody's getting a vote by mail. You vote by mail, and then you go to a vote center and try and vote again. <clears throat> In the past, we actually ask you to surrender that vote by mail. And if you don't have it to surrender, you automatically vote provisionally. Well, now, if you show up at the vote center, they're going to say, hey, we know everybody got a vote by mail. Do you have yours to surrender? You're going to tell them no. I don't know if I lost it, whatever. We don't know either. We're not going to question it. 
but the new system provides us with the ability to spoil that ballot remotely. So now they could enter, oh, no vote by mail, you vote there. If that vote by mail ballot does get back to us, when we scan it, it's gonna come up as a spoiled ballot and show that you voted at the polls instead. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, that's thank an added you. security we didn't have in the past. And actually that security, I'm sorry, if I could, that security will expand as more counties adopt the same system. Because now I would know if someone in Orange County voted, if we're on a statewide, well, we are on a statewide voter database, if every county had the same system or worked off that same uh, poll pad, okay. then we would know if someone in Orange County voted and then tried to come over here and throw another ballot in or something. We could track across the state. Okay, we have a, anybody else that's got a burning issue? Phil, we appreciate very much your taking time to come. To yes. talk to our people. I appreciate the opportunity. Like I said, in this COVID era, I don't have people out there doing this. So the more I could do, and I know many of you are part of civic organizations. I know I've worked with the Kiwanis in the past, Rotary Club. So if you want me to come out and do this again, hey, I love, I love going to the Continental. Let's do it again, gentlemen.